What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Simplify It, where we're breaking down the ACS piece by piece every single day. I'm Garrett, a flight instructor, and today we're covering required inspections and airplane logbook documentation. Look for that in the ACS is PAIBK1B. All right, so we're back with another really helpful acronym on this one. This is another acronym that you want to burn into your brain because you will be talking about it on your check ride, I can guarantee you. So let's get right into it. The acronym itself, AVATE, is referring to the inspections themselves, not really the logbook documentation section of it. So we're gonna go through AVATE, and then when we're done, I'm gonna wipe it and we'll go through record keeping. Record keeping shorter, less information to go with it. So we're talking about our inspections. Every plane needs to be inspected and there's different types of inspections that different planes need to undergo based on the operations that they're taking part in or the type of plane that they are. For most of us getting our private pilot license, we're doing it in a single engine prop plane, maybe a multi-engine. And regardless if, if you're in a Piper Cherokee or a Cessna 152, these inspections are gonna be the same for our GA trainer aircraft. So starting off, we've got A, which is our annual inspection. So this is an inspection that has to be done, as the name implies, annually, or otherwise known as 12 calendar months. Now, if you've been watching the videos or maybe you've started partaking in your flight training, you've probably heard the term calendar months multiple times now. And essentially all we're doing when we say calendar months is rounding the month off. So if we get our annual inspection on the 16th of the month in December, it's not gonna be due till the 31st of December next year. So you have the 12 months plus you get to finish the month of whatever the inspection was in. So for an annual inspection, it's gonna be 12 calendar months. The annual inspection is a very thorough inspection. It consists of an inspection of the airframe, the propeller, the engine, similar to the 100 hour, except an even more thorough checklist. A 100 hour inspection might take one to two days, where an annual inspection might take three to four. Another thing with the annual inspections is I want to, you to think of aviation mechanics as having two calibers, and that's one being, being an AMP, and AMP stands for airframe and power plant mechanic. So there's those guys, the AMPs, and then there's the next caliber up, which is the AMPs with an IA or an inspection authorization. So the reason why I even mentioned that is because only an AMP with an IA can do an annual inspection, but a 100 hour inspection can be done by just an AMP. And I know we haven't really started talking about the 100 hour inspection yet, so we're gonna get into it in a second here. So similar to the previous video, this is not a topic that your DPE in your check ride is gonna be asking you for the specific regulations every single time. They might, but in my experience and the experience of others around me, this section is more, they're gonna be asking you about it. They want you to know the information and to be able to talk about what these things are. But if you can't be like, oh, it's a 91, 400, whatever, that's not gonna be as big of a deal as if you don't even know what the annual inspection is to begin with or how often it has to be done or why it's done, things like that. So with that said, if you want a regulation to go alongside these, I do have some for you guys. So the one for the annual 91409 Alpha states that we have to have annuals and lays out some rules for that. All right, so next is our VOR inspection. And this is the one that students get wrong the most consistently if I'm asked, because usually the, I think the 30 days throws them off compared to the rest being 12 or 24 calendar months. But the reason why the VOR inspection only needs to be inspected every 30 days is one, because you only need it if you're actually gonna be on an instrument flight plan. You don't actually need to have your VOR inspected and working if you're gonna be flying VFR. Another reason is because this isn't the type of inspection where you gotta shut the plane down, pull it in the hangar, and it's gonna be out for a couple days. The VOR inspection can be done in the air, it can be done on the ground, and it usually only takes a few minutes, and then you just have to document it in the logbook, which we're also gonna get into at the end here. So because it's not a crazy thorough inspection and we only need it given certain conditions, we just have to make sure it's done every 30 days if we're gonna fly in those conditions, which is instrument. All right, and next we've got our 100 hour inspection. So the I in Aviate, you can replace with the number one. And this is referring to the inspection that your plane has to go through every 100 hours of use with the caveat being, if your plane's being used for hire. 
Now, your flight school is going to have to give their planes 100 hour inspections. But when you get your private pilot license and say somehow you've got the money to buy your own plane, right? You don't have to do 100 hour inspections on your plane unless you start making money off of it. And that's because the 100 hour inspection only has to be done if the plane's being used for hire. Or in other words, if the plane is being used for somebody to make money. So if you're flying with your flight instructor and your flight instructor is getting paid to teach you, then the plane's for hire and the plane's gonna need a 100 hour inspection. You getting your own plane flying around just for fun on the weekends, there's no 100 hour inspection needed for that. Now, another caveat for the 100 hour inspection is that this is 100 hours of tachometer time not 100 hours of Hobbs time. So when you're logging your hours in your logbook after you've just completed a flight, there's two dials that you are should be paying attention to, if not your instructor's writing them down for sure. And those are your Hobbs times and your tachometer time. The Hobbs meter turns on and starts taking the second you turn the master switch on. So the Hobbs is basically counting anytime you're in the plane. The tachometer, on the other hand, works a little bit differently. So most people will tell you it's not counting until you turn the engine on, and then it's still not counting, but once you get over a certain RPM, then it will start counting. So it's essentially counting the engine being used time, not on the ground, but actually being flown. But it actually works a little bit differently than that. The way that the tachometer works in an airplane at least, not in your car. Let's say your plane idles at 1000 RPM and its max is 2700 RPM and your tachometer starts counting at 1600 RPM. So when you're on the ground just taxiing around, your tachometer time, most people will tell you, is not counting. And then when you go full power and you start taking off and you're flying around, you're over 1600 RPM. Now your tachometer time is counting. How it actually works is that when you're on the ground below that 1600 RPM threshold, your tachometer time is still counting, but only at 20% speed. So it's ticking very, very slowly. Hey you guys, I'm editing the video and uh, the little spiel that I'm going on right here isn't that valuable. So just wanna make sure the diagram's fully explained. So essentially below that RPM threshold, we're counting at 20% speed. Past the threshold, we're counting at 100% speed. That's what the drawing here is showing. Anyways, our next letter is the next A, which is our altimeter slash static encoder inspection, which only has to be done every 24 calendar months. And if you'll notice, we've got the green star, meaning you only need this one if you're gonna be flying instrument as well. And I forgot to say it for the other ones, but 91411 is the one for that one. Along each side of our acronym here, I've got the FARS where you can reference these if you wanna take a look. Next one is T for our transponder. This also needs to be inspected every 24 calendar months and also is only needed if we're flying in instrument flight rules. Now this video is not here to tell you what the altimeter and transponder slash static encoder system are. Eventually we'll be getting into that as we go through the ACS. So if you're interested in learning about those things, like and subscribe to the channel as it helps us grow and so you don't miss out on those videos. All right, and our last letter here is an acronym with Within an acronym, we've got ELT, which stands for Emergency Locator Transmitter. So in your training as you're beginning, you are probably learning about tuning in different frequencies into the radio. Well, one of those frequencies is a universal one. It's called the guard frequency, and it's 121.5. And your ELT is essentially like an alarm that blares on that guard frequency should there be an emergency situation. We're picking up an ELT. Uh, here it is on 21.5. That's uh, emergency, emergency locator transmitter that's going off. Hopefully it's just uh, something that got bumped and it's been inverted. Now it doesn't necessarily automatically go off. You can either turn the ELT on yourself or if you hit the ground hard enough, it should automatically start going off. The ELT has its own battery and because it's for such an important thing, emergencies, it has its own inspection. And the rules for ELTs are laid out in 91207. The inspection duration itself, it's 12 calendar months again or one half of the battery's life or an hour of cumulative use. So when we say one half of the battery's life, we're not saying, okay, go look at the battery and see what the battery percentage of it says, is it at 50%? No, 
your battery is going to have a shelf life should be posted on the battery itself it'll say four years or eight years whatever the battery's shelf life is after you've made it to half of that battery shelf life you got to replace it the next one an hour of cumulative use essentially means that you can use it for up to an hour altogether so if i get into the plane and test my elt for five minutes and then tomorrow you get into the plane and you test the elt for five minutes we've used 10 minutes of the cumulative hour. And if we use 50 more, then we're gonna have to do the inspection. And we're gonna have to replace the battery, excuse me. That's another thing that people get confused about. 12 calendar months is how often you have to do the inspection. But if your half battery life happens before that, then you don't have to do the entire inspection again. You just have to replace the battery. So if you wanna test your ELT to make sure it actually is working, you can do so on that guard frequency, one to 1.5 in the first five minutes of any hour. So say it turns to one o'clock PM, you've got five minutes where you're allowed to test that. And if people are on guard and they're hearing ELTs go off, they're not gonna listen to it. They're just, okay, he's testing it. But what that means is if you get in an emergency in the first five minutes of the hour, people might disregard the ELT. But after the five minutes has passed and your ELT is still blaring, that's gonna be cause for concern for some people. And just for some interesting tidbits, you might be wondering, well, who's actually even listening to guard? Is anybody gonna hear me if I'm in an emergency situation? And yes, they will. Um, oftentimes nearby control towers are listening in as well as airliners. Certain airlines make their pilots listen to guard while they're flying. Delta is known for this. All right, so quick review before I erase this and we talk about the documentation part. We've got our annual inspection. Every 12 calendar months has to be signed off by an AMP with an IA. The annual inspection can take place of the 100 hour, but the 100 hour cannot take place of the annual inspection. Your VOR inspection, you only need it every 30 days and you only need it for instrument flight rules and you can check it yourself. Your 100 hour inspection, inspected every 100 hours of tachometer time and it's only needed if the plane is for hire. And an AMP can perform a 100 hour inspection without an IA. Your altimeter slash static encoder system due every 24 calendar months. Your transponder due every 24 calendar months and your ELT inspection due every 12 calendar months or half the battery life or an hour of cumulative use. And it's for the purpose of letting people know if you're in an emergency. All right, next is logbook documentation. I'll see you guys in a sec. All right, guys, we're back for logbook documentation. So there's one regulation that covers the entire subject and that's 91417. And what this regulation states is that for all the inspections that we just talked about in Aviate, Anytime we do those inspections or any kind of work, we have to document it in our plane's maintenance logbook. So what are the things that we have to log and how do we have to log it? Well, 91.417. We have to log any maintenance that gets done. Duh. This also includes any preventative maintenance done. So that could be work that you do once you get your private pilot license. Say, you know, you replace some tires and change out the oil. Small things, but you still got to document those as well. We want to document the total time for the aircraft, including its total time for components of its airframe, engine, and propeller. You want to keep a documentation of the status of a life limited parts. And so these are parts that are installed in the plane and after a certain amount of hours used or a certain amount of years in the plane, for example, they are not allowed to be used anymore because of corrosion or structural failure, whatever it may be. You want to know the status of those parts as well. You want to have your current inspection status logged in the maintenance logbooks. You don't want it to be from a month ago if you want it to be the most updated, up-to-date condition of your plane. And you have to make sure that you are up to date with all of your ADs or airworthiness directives. If you don't know what those are yet, or you're still a little bit confused about those, luckily that's tomorrow's video. So like and subscribe, stay tuned for that because we're going to be getting all into airworthiness directives and the special airworthiness information bulletin tomorrow. But for this video, what you need to know is that you got to be current with your IDs, make sure they're being listened to and documented in your aircraft's maintenance logbook. If any major alterations or repairs have taken place, then you also want to make sure that you have your Form 337s in your aircraft maintenance logbook. And anytime you're going to alter the records for an inspection you've done, you have to note in the maintenance logbook that you altered those records as well. 
So anytime we're logging any of these, you can think of your three Ds, and those are what you actually have to write in the logbook for these. So first you got your description, a description of whatever the work getting done, the date that it was done, and then we've got the doer. And I just laid it out this way so that you can memorize it easier, but the doer is whoever did the work. So that can be your mechanic, that can be you once you get your private pilot license and maybe you're doing some basic maintenance. Whoever does it, they have to write down their name and their certificate number alongside this other information in the logbook, as well as a signature. I guess I counted that as the name, but you have to have the signature and the cert number. All right, guys, when it comes to required inspections and documenting them, that's all there really is to it is AV8 and how to document it in 91417. If you can get both of those in your head, then you will be just fine talking about inspections in your check ride. If you enjoyed the video today or it helped you out a little bit, please like and subscribe as it helps the channel grow a lot. We're still small here, but the more you guys do that, the more it shows YouTube that other student pilots should see this. We'll have another video coming out tomorrow on air readiness directives and the special air readiness information bulletin, like I was saying before. And we're continuing to break down the ACS piece by piece every single day after that. So, but alrighty guys, I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.